Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. If you watched the last video, then you know that what we got to was this little piece of code that implements the ball and it now bounces and we can bounce it off the paddles. So this is great. The ball's functionality is implemented. The player controller's functionality is implemented. Um, uh, you should watch that video if you haven't already. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to add functionality to the AI. And so to make the game fair, we want the AI to move exactly the same way we would move if we were the player, which is we hit the up arrow, we try and go up, we hit the down arrow, we try and go down. And that's a glitch that we will have to fix as well. So let's go into our code. And so we will say, um, first of all, let's go to the player controller. And we're going to actually want to use the same functionality. And so what better way to use the same functionality than to literally use the same functionality? So I'm going to create a couple methods in here and we'll call this public void move up double dt and then public void move down double dt okay and so what this is going to do is it's just going to move it up or down so let's actually move this because this is the code that moves the paddle up and then this because this is the code whoops this is the code that moves the paddle up this is the code that moves the paddle down. So let's move these into the appropriate places. Change this to move down dt. This to move up dt. Cool. And then let's hit F10. And we should be able to move the paddle. Yep, up and down still works perfectly fine. And now we can let our AI use this move up function and this move down function if we give it a controller. Now. The AI is not going to need a key listener, so we'll actually implement another player controller constructor, and this will just take in a rectangle, and then we can say this dot rect equals rect, and then we'll say if we have a key listener that's not null, then we'll check to see if the player is hitting up or down. Otherwise, we're going to let the AI do its thing, and so we'll actually initialize this key listener to null. Um, let's let's move that to the constructor. So we'll initialize it to null in here. This dot key listener equals null, and this will be how we'll tell if it's an AI controlling it or if it's player controlling it. Player's controlling it. It's going to have a player controller key listener. AI is controlling it. Not going to have a key listener. Okay. So then let's go to our window, and we will give the AI a player controller. So we'll actually add in another player controller up here. And we'll call this AI controller. Okay. And then we're going to go down here. AI controller equals new player controller. And then we're going to give it the AI's rectangle. And we don't want a key listener. So we'll just leave that null. And that should be good. And then down here, we'll update the AI controller as well. Uh, right here. And so that should update this player controller. Okay. So we know this is the player because they have a key listener. Otherwise, we know it is the AI. And how do we know if we should move up or if we should move down? Um, we'll actually implement that in a different class for the AI specifically. So we'll create a new class over here. We'll call this AI. Um, yeah, just AI. Yeah. We'll call it AI controller. Yeah, I was debating about that. So. Inside the AI controller, what this guy is going to have is he's going to have a player controller. And that's what's going to be used to move him. And then a reference to our ball. So we'll say rectangle ball. And then we'll say create a constructor. And he expects a player controller. Player controller. And a rectangle, which is going to be the ball. And then we'll actually also add in. Well, we don't have to add in the rectangle for the player paddle or the AI paddle because that's already encapsulated in here. Okay, so then we'll say player controller equals player controller. This dot ball equals ball. And then we'll go up to here and we'll say void update DT and double. So just the same stuff we've been doing for all the other things. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to call the controllers update method first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check and see if the ball is above our paddle or if the ball is below our paddle. So our controller is going to be really stupid, our AI. It's just literally going to check and see, um, is the ball above me or is it below me? And if it's above, 
move up. If it's below, move down. Okay. So we'll say if the balls y plus, so we'll just say if the balls y, which is going to be the top y, is less than, and then we're going to say if it's less than r y, which is just player controller dot rect dot y, then we want to move up. So we'll say player controller dot move up dt. Nice and simple. Otherwise, if the balls y plus the balls height is greater than r y plus r height. So if the ball's bottom y is greater than our bottom y, then we want to move down. Okay. And that should be all we need to get this working. And now it should move up when the ball is moving up and move down when it's moving down. So we'll go back to our window. We'll actually rename this AI controller. And then down here, we will say the AI controller is a new AI controller. And then we'll pass it in a new player controller. And then this will take in the rectangle for the AI. And then we will pass it in the ball. So ball, which is not initialized yet. So we'll actually do the AI after we initialize the ball here. And then we will put this right up here. That way the ball can still get the left paddle and the right paddle. And then the AI can get everything it needs. And we got an error here and it's saying it's expecting a ball class or a ball rectangle. So we passed in the ball class. Um, turn that off. We'll go ball rectangle. There we go. And then that should be good. And then instead of updating, oh, yep, this should be good. So this updates our AI controller, which updates the player controller, which then says if it needs to move up, move up, move down, if it needs to move down by checking where the ball is. So let's just see what happens. It's moving down, stopping, it's moving up. And you notice that when it hit the top of that, it stopped. Okay, so that's a little too stupid. <laughs> it's not moving quite right. Let's see if we can fix that. So what's going on? Uh, when it's moving down, we say if the ball Y plus the ball height, so if the bottom ball is Y, it's greater than player controller's rectangle plus the player controller's Y. Oh. That's what's wrong. Plus the prayer controller's height. We should be doing Y plus the height. Let's try this again. So it's following the ball. Following the ball. And we should get it to bounce. Nice. Look at that. And so now it's bouncing. And you notice it moves exactly the same way as we do because we're giving it the same functionality. So it can't do anything different. It's going to move the same speed. It's going to hit the top and the bottom the same way we do. It's going to bounce the ball the same. Um, this is basically Pong. We're, we're basically done, but we want to add some more functionality. And so in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a score tracker up here. Um, or actually in the next video, what we'll do is we'll, we'll make the balls bouncing a little bit more interesting because right now it's literally just flipping the X direction, the speed staying the same, the Y, the X velocity. What we'll do is we'll check and see where it's hitting the paddle. And then depending on where it hits the paddle, it will bounce off at an angle. And so that will just introduce a little bit more complexity to the game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please hit like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Thank you. See you.